Hey there. Is Tunisia's democracy dying? This is probably the most important question in the Arab world today. You may be surprised to hear that Tunisia has a democracy. Over the past decade, it's been pushed out of the news by the more dramatic fallout from the Arab Spring, like the disasters in Yemen and Syria and the machinations of global and local powers across the Middle East and North Africa. Nonetheless, eight years later, Tunisian democracy exists in a country that identifies as both majority Arab and majority Muslim. It is quite an accomplishment. The Arab Spring began in December 2010 when Mohamed Bouazizi set himself on fire in the city of Sidi Bouzid to protest government oppression. I still think the Arab Spring is a good thing, but there's no denying that it's fallen into chaos in many places. Tunisia is the exception. On January 14, 2011, President Ben Ali resigned and fled the country after 23 years in power. Tunisia had successful presidential and parliamentary elections in 2014 and free and fair elections to local municipalities in 2018. Tunisia has a mixed parliamentary and presidential system with a directly elected president and, like the United Kingdom, prime ministers who can fall without an election. So we have already seen multiple peaceful transitions of power. Even more impressive, in 2014, the Islamist Ennahada party entered into a coalition with the more secular Nida Tunas party. Ennahada is supposedly affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood, whatever that means, and Saudi Arabia really wants to convince us that democratic government is impossible with that kind of party. For five years now, Tunisia has been proving that it is very possible, and that Arabs can absolutely do better than dictators and medieval kings. It's an extraordinary accomplishment. But nobody is happy. The economy is a disaster. A series of terrorist attacks in 2015 and 2016 did exactly what they were designed to do, and almost killed the lucrative tourism industry that Tunisia depends on. More and more people are beginning to wonder if democracy is even worth it. Yippee! They've got free speech and free assembly, but living standards have not risen significantly since 2011, and the pace of protests is accelerating. Even worse, the Islamist and secularist parties are beginning to do a slow-motion version of the exact same dance that killed Egyptian democracy back in 2013. The Islamist party is a little stronger in elections, so the secularists have been threatening to declare them a terrorist group. Even worse, the International Crisis Group reports that the secular party is reaching out to Saudi Arabia and the UAE to help them crush the idea of Islamic democracy. The Islamists are reacting to this poorly, of course, and trying to consolidate power. The elections at the end of this year could be a disaster. Of course, none of this is any help at all to the 11 million Tunisians who have been waiting for eight years for things to get better. So does this mean Saudi Arabia is right? Is Arab democracy impossible? Of course not. The Tunisians have proved that it is very possible. The fact that they've managed to keep going for the past eight years is an extraordinary accomplishment. It may all fall apart, but if it does, this period will serve as an example of what's possible, and it will inspire future generations. And if Tunisia's democracy falls, it will not be the fault of the Tunisians. First off, their neighborhood is a disaster. The old Tunisian dictatorship sat fat and happy in between two oil-rich countries. Tunisian democracy has not been so lucky. Libya was destroyed by NATO in 2011, and the international community continues to support differing warring factions. It's been a constant low-level civil war, and it's an absolute disgrace for the international community. Tunisia has to deal with refugees, spillover terror attacks, and obviously has very little useful trade with Libya. To the west, Algeria is in better shape, but it's still a rotting oligarchy, reliant on oil prices that have been too low for comfort for five years now. And Algeria's teetering oligarchy really doesn't want a successful democracy next door either. Last week, I used a very incomplete data set to estimate that since 2011, Tunisia had received somewhere under $800 million a year in aid from every country and international agency in the world. I contrasted that with the 8 to 9 billion euros that Poland gets every year, just from the EU. 
Now, after spending some hours with this data, I have to conclude that it's actually much, much worse than I initially thought. The IATI data that I used for the Tunisia numbers includes some double counting, and it also includes money that is committed but not actually spent. But that's not the worst bit. Most of this money is not a grant. It's debt. Poland's money is mostly given to them like, as a gift in return for some governmental reforms. But the requirements that are put on Tunisia are much, much stricter, and they are required to pay back almost all of this money. Tunisia is not a white country, so they don't actually get foreign aid, they get foreign debt. As with many countries in trouble, Tunisia's most important source of loans is the International Monetary Fund. Back in 2016, Tunisia was awarded a four-year, $2.8 billion loan. Not a grant, a loan. And before they get each chunk of money, the IMF has to approve their progress. In January, the Tunisian government was trapped between its promises to the IMF and a massive countrywide strike led by the country's largest labor union. The IMF is now threatening to withhold the next chunk of money because Tunisia gave in to the strikers and raised the wages of some workers. Yep, you heard that right. In the midst of an economic crisis with runaway inflation and a region-wide economic catastrophe, the IMF wants Tunisia to pay people less. What do you think that would do to the stability of the Tunisian government? Now, I'm not an economist, and I don't want to get into a conversation about austerity one way or the other, but looking specifically at the policy in this country, I've got to wonder, is the international community intentionally trying to kill Tunisian democracy? As I talked about almost three years ago, uh, my country, the United States, isn't any better on this. The U.S. State Department recently boasted that the United States has provided more than $360 million in economic growth-related activities since 2011, including loan guarantees in 2012 and 2014, blah, 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 blah. That's a good start, but an average of $72 million a year and the opportunity to get into more debt is essentially nothing. Compare that to the billions we've already given to Egypt's restored dictator or the billions we've spent to make the Syrian civil war worse. We need to do more for Tunisia. If we're really serious about Arab democracy, we will. The USAID website makes it clear how little the United States cares. As Tunisia has racked up successful elections and peaceful transfers of power, U.S. grant-making to Tunisia has fallen, not risen. What's really stunning to me here is how little money it would take to make a massive difference. The Tunisian government is currently tying itself in knots, trying desperately to get access to less than a half a billion dollars a year in loans from the IMF. A grant of a billion dollars a year, less than an eighth of what Poland gets, would be transformative for Tunisia and probably for the region as a whole. It does look to me like Tunisia's democracy is in danger of failing, but we could save it for the cost of like eight fighter jets a year. And if we could set up long-lasting freedom and democracy in North Africa, we could avoid the cost of hundreds of fighter jets over generations. That's the opportunity we are squandering here. The counter-argument is, well, we don't want to create dependency. If that was something we really wanted to avoid, then we probably shouldn't have destroyed Libya, Tunisia's next-door neighbor. Next time, I'll talk a little bit more about the international community's ongoing destruction of that poor country. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you want a free essay on a completely different topic, I suggest you click on the link here to sign up for my email list. Thanks.